Welcome to a cinematic journey back to 1965, where the epic tale of Genghis Khan unfolds on the silver screen. Have you ever wondered when was the first time you watched this movie, or which classic Hollywood actor left an indelible mark on your memory? Before we delve into your personal connection with this classic, let's set the stage with some intriguing details about the film. Directed by Henry Levin, this historical spectacle captures the sweeping landscapes and the tumultuous life of a man whose legacy shaped the course of history. As you reflect on your experience with the movie, consider the stellar cast that graced the screen. Perhaps a classic Hollywood actor stood out as your favorite, adding depth and charisma to the portrayal of characters embroiled in the vast expanses of Genghis Khan's world. Now, let's hear from you. What is your most cherished memory or personal experience tied to this cinematic journey? We invite you to share your stories and memories in the comments below, creating a tapestry of connections that transcend time. Embark on this reminiscence with fellow enthusiasts and let the dialogue flow like the narrative of Genghis Khan. Your anecdotes are the threads that weave the collective tapestry of shared experiences. Share away would love to hear your unique perspective on this cinematic gem. Genghis Khan, the 1965 film, features an interesting cast dynamic with notable actors like Eli Wallach and Telly Savalas having limited screen time. Wallach's character is introduced early in the film, creating anticipation for an earlier appearance that only materializes much later, offering a unique narrative structure. Despite their brief roles, both Wallach and Savalas are billed ahead of actors in more substantial roles, such as Robert Morley and Michael Horder. This casting choice adds an intriguing element to the film, making viewers curious about the development of these seemingly minor characters. Additionally, it's worth noting the historical context that some Mongol and Turkic tribes had fair hair and blue eyes. Legend suggests that Genghis Khan himself, a formidable figure in history, may have been a red-haired Scythian challenging conventional depictions. This historical tidbit adds a layer of complexity to the portrayal of characters in the film, prompting audiences to question traditional representations of the Mongol leader. Furthermore, the inclusion of Claire Bloom in the project, even if briefly, contributes to the overall star-studded ensemble. While she might not have a lengthy presence in the film, Bloom's attachment to the project at one point underscores the caliber of talent associated with the production. In summary, the 1965 movie Genghis Khan weaves a narrative with unexpected character developments and a diverse cast. The brief but impactful roles of Eli Wallach and Telly Savalas, along with the historical twist of Genghis Khan's potential red-haired lineage, make this film a nuanced exploration of the iconic figure story. Stephen Boyd, taking the lead in the 1965 film, was not only the highest paid actor, but also had the primary billing. This, however, led to tensions with emerging star Omar Sharif. Despite the movie's Asian setting, it was shot in Yugoslavia. Notably, it marked Carlo Cura's final role as Temujin as a child. The film's backdrop reveals an interesting clash between the lead actors and the unique choice of filming location. These aspects provide a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes dynamics of the production, offering a different angle to the iconic historical narrative. The 1965 film featuring Genghis Khan faced behind-the-scenes tensions that reverberated on screen. Notably, Eli Wallach, stepping into a role due to a collapse play, was paid a weekly sum surpassing Omar Sharif's entire film paycheck. This financial twist adds a layer of intrigue to the production, shedding light on the urgency behind Wallach's involvement. Moreover, the film, often broadcast in the 21st century, carries a warning for its offensive racial casting, sparking discussions about its portrayal. Originally titled The Golden Horde in 1964, the film's journey from conception to screen unveils interesting facets, setting the stage for a deeper exploration into the making of this cinematic piece. Roger Croucher's final theatrical movie, Genghis Khan, holds a unique place in film history. This 1965 production, shot in Yugoslavia despite its Asian setting, not only featured a diverse cast and unexpected character developments, but also boasted technical accomplishments. Released in 70 new and advertised with six-track stereophonic sound in Sydney's now-closed Barclays Cinema, the film aimed to immerse audiences in a grand cinematic experience. Interestingly, the movie's grandeur reached beyond the screen. It became a favorite guilty pleasure for acclaimed director Stanley Kubrick. This unexpected connection led to Sir Michael Hordern, a notable actor in Genghis Khan, being chosen as the narrator for Kubrick's later work, Barry Lyndon. 
The film's impact on Kubrick's choices sheds light on its enduring influence in unexpected corners of the film industry. As we delve into the layers of Genghis Khan, it's worth noting that Eli Wallach and Telly Savalas, despite limited screen time, played pivotal roles that added depth to the narrative. The tensions between lead actors Stephen Boyd and Omar Sharif, set against the backdrop of Yugoslavia, further contribute to the behind-the-scenes dynamics that shape the iconic historical narrative. Beyond the drama on set, the film's journey from conception to screen is marked by intriguing facets. Originally titled The Golden Horde in 1964, the project faced financial twists, including Wallach's significant pay exceeding Sheriff's entire film paycheck. This not only highlights the urgency behind Wallach's involvement, but also adds a layer of intrigue to the production's history. Additionally, as the film continues to be broadcast in the 21st century, discussions about its offensive racial casting have surfaced, prompting a reevaluation of its portrayal. In conclusion, Genghis Khan, beyond being a cinematic piece from 1965, is a multifaceted journey involving technical achievements, unexpected connections in the film industry, and behind-the-scenes intrigues. The movie's impact goes beyond its runtime, influencing directors like Stanley Kubrick and sparking discussions about representation. Yul Brynner's price tag became a pivotal factor in the making of the film. Producer Irving Allen deemed Brynner too expensive for the role. This financial consideration set the stage for the casting choices that followed, leading to the selection of Stephen Boyd as the lead. Interestingly, Boyd, Omar Sheriff, and James Mason had previously shared the screen in the fall of the Roman Empire in 1964, adding a layer of familiarity among the main cast. Additionally, the film marked the debut of Jacqueline Pierce, introducing a new face to the cinematic landscape. These casting decisions and the financial considerations surrounding Brenner's potential involvement shaped the course of the 1965 movie, influencing the narrative and on-screen dynamics. As we bid adieu to the cinematic journey through the epic tale that is Genghis Khan, I implore you to indulge in a moment of reflection. Allow the echoes of this masterpiece to resonate within you, for it is more than just a film, it's a voyage through the corridors of history, a tapestry woven with threads of conquest, love, and legacy. In the quiet recesses of your mind, summon forth your fondest memories of this cinematic gem. Was it the sweeping landscapes that painted the backdrop of Genghis Khan's extraordinary life? Or perhaps the stirring performances that brought the characters to life with a pulsating vitality? As the credits roll, let your thoughts wander, and share with us the imprints this timeless tale has left on your soul. Our collective experiences shape the narrative of Genghis Khan, transcending mere cinema. Your reflections breathe life into the enduring legacy of this film, connecting us across time and space. In the age of digital echoes, let your voice be heard and reveal the intricate mosaic of emotions and thoughts inspired by this cinematic odyssey. In the grand tapestry of storytelling, your perspective is a vital thread weaving seamlessly into the larger narrative. Whether a fleeting thought or a profound revelation, your contribution adds richness to the collective understanding of Genghis Khan's impact. Share your musings, unveil your insights, and let the echoes of your reflections reverberate through the annals of this cinematic adventure. As we draw the curtain on this shared exploration, I extend my heartfelt gratitude for your time and engagement. Your presence in this dialogue enriches the narrative creating a vibrant tapestry of shared experiences. Until our paths cross again in the realms of storytelling, thank you for being a part of this cinematic conversation. Reflect, share, and immerse yourself in the magic that is Genghis Khan, for every voice adds a unique hue to the canvas of our collective memory. Until next we meet in the realms of storytelling, thank you for your time and interest.